Darwin is without doubt the most influential scientist who has ever lived. Because he became so phenomenally famous and because his theory affected human beings so fundamentally that he was of interest to many people. The ripple effect that went out from Darwin and his productivity was unparalleled. His name and his influence were felt everywhere. Darwin became very quickly a unprecedented media phenomenon in his own time. Because his book, The Origin of Species, was so controversial, because it claimed that human beings, or it implied that human beings were descended from other animals, and that the nature of life on Earth was not as people had thought. The Victorians were living in a radically new age in which science and technology seemed to be conquering nature. Darwin's theory of evolution comes about in the midst of this, and it's seen as, by contemporaries, as perhaps the greatest scientific revolution the world has seen since the time of Newton. And we found out the key to how life on Earth works and how everything that lives on this Earth got to be here the way it is. Not through ancient mythological stories, but modern science has unlocked it all. It uh, caught the world's attention and within five or ten years, there were few people who could read who had not heard of Mr. Darwin and his radical theories. And within 20 years, the debate, the fight over evolution was over. The leaf we're considering was written in response to a request by a German language teacher named Hermann Kint in 1865. He published a magazine which printed facsimiles of the handwriting or the autographs of famous people and biographical entries. And he'd already written to Darwin, so he tried his luck and asked if he could have a passage from The Origin of Species of Darwin's choosing, and could Darwin please sign it? The significance is that this was Darwin's choice, what words to choose. And he chose a passage from the conclusion, which probably is the most powerful summarizing paragraph he could have chosen to elicit a good response in the reader that this is so overwhelmingly correct and true and all of these things show that it must be the case and that there's no other interpretation. So I think he was quite pleased with this passage. And then the bold signature, which is unusual, most of his letters and things are signed with an abbreviated ch, C-H Darwin, or just C Darwin. But this one's been given a full signature because he knows it's been requested for photographic uh, reproduction. Darwin manuscripts have been sold over the last hundred and more years. But Darwin was not sentimental about physical things, whether it's family heirlooms or his own working documents. Once they had fulfilled their purpose, they were nothing. Nowadays, people look on these as incredibly special artifacts, but for Darwin, they weren't. And that's why so few of them survive. He treated them as scrap paper, but this one is unique because it's not a draft. It's been specially prepared for someone, and he even took some trouble with his handwriting, which is notoriously awful. When he's writing drafts of his publications, normally he's just going at it in his own rapid hand, and they're very hard to read. So this is a beautiful document. It's in perfect condition, and the handwriting is great. The origin of species changed the world forever. Even in his own lifetime, he was regarded as absolutely exceptional and that his influence was beyond parallel. Whether or not one liked everything that he said or not, even his enemies agreed that this was a dominating figure and worthy of respect. No one has influenced our understanding of nature more than this man, and perhaps no one ever will.